the state of online supply chain management education during the pandemic. That's the topic of our discussion today, and I'm speaking with Nehemiah Scott. He is professor and director of supply chain management at University of Illinois. Professor Scott, welcome. Thank you for having me, Robert. So, as, as is the case with so many other educational subjects, supply chain management education is going online. What is the focus of that particular course? How is it different from what you might do in person? Like, what kind of stuff is being taught in, in, that, uh, in, in that mode? Yeah, thanks for that question. So this particular course, it's a supply chain disruption course, specifically uh, surrounding COVID-19 and the PPE supply chain. Uh, but this course was actually developed not just for supply chain management professionals, but also for anyone who is interested in just simply learning more about how supply chains operate and ultimately how these supply chains can be disrupted. And the reason is because COVID-19 was something that was realized by everyone. Right. Consumers, when they went to go and purchase toilet tissue, the toilet tissue wasn't there. We're all very also familiar with the lack of PPE that was available during this time for not only the industrial sector, but especially the healthcare system uh, with with having uh, with not having the PPE that was there. So this course really introduces people to supply chain management first and foremost. Uh, that's what module one covers. Module two goes specifically into what supply chain disruption actually is. So it, it goes through some concepts as to uh, what makes supply chains highly susceptible to a disruption. Is it because of the structure of their supply chain? Right. One of the things that we focus on in that part of the course is lack of visibility in current supply chains. Uh, the fact that some companies are not really aware of all is who is in their supply chain. Uh, but mm -hmm. we also talk about risks that are uh, that every company is, is, um, is dealing with across their supply chain operations as well. The third module then takes everything that we've talked about in modules one and two, and we apply it specifically to COVID-19 and the PPE supply chain. Now, you know, one of the common questions I get, you know, quite often about the course is how is it that, you know, you can teach something that's still evolving? And, and that's exactly correct. The, the tough thing about teaching this topic is the situation is still changing and it's going to continue to change. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to COVID-19 and PPE supply chain, we take those things that apply to disruptions in general. We talk about them uh, in the context of the PPE supply chain and also talk about how it might change in the future. And then the course ends with talking about best practices for managing supply chain disruptions in general. Yeah, interesting that you, I mean, you can use the current situation as a jumping off point for a larger, broader approach to supply, to supply chain management education. It's almost a good excuse to get people interested in a topic that they might not have been thinking about before. Are you detecting a great uh, uptick in interest among potential students in this topic as a result? Absolutely. And, and this is a great question because as part of the undergraduate supply chain management program at Geese College of Business, the students, they are actually required to complete an internship uh, as part of their graduation requirements. Mm -hmm. And so with COVID-19, what actually happened is we had, a, we had a group of students who were directly impacted. Some students lost their internship opportunities. Other students actually lost full-time work. Now, we're happy to say that, that those students did find internship opportunities and the students who lost their, their, uh, their immediate um, full-time opportunities, they did regain some other opportunities. But because of those experiences, students are definitely interested in learning more about supply chain disruption and supply chain risk. Can you relax or will you relax your internship requirement under the program in, in this current situation where internships are so hard to come by? That is something that we had to do uh, this, mm -hmm. this, sem this semester uh, because this is a situation that was outside of the control of the students, obviously. And this is uh, something, of course, that we also hold near and dear to the program. So then comes the question, well, how do you actually balance the requirements uh, such that, you know, students are not uh, unfairly or unnecessarily taxed when it comes time for graduation? And so we're at we were, you know, as a program, we were happy to report that a lot of our students who maintain their internships just had them converted to virtual, 
or they were cut in terms of their uh, time mm -hmm. duration, so they just weren't as long. But for the students who lost the internship, we provided a number of other options for them to actually meet the requirement that we normally would not have. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, finding a virtual internship or virtual externship could now satisfy the requirement. We also have a group of companies as part of our supply chain corporate affiliate program um, who uh, we have also talked to about the possibility of developing projects that can be completed during the semester to help meet that requirement. But of course, if there is a student having too, too tough of a time, the last thing that we will do as a program is hold them back from graduation for something that was out of their control. Just to be clear on your target uh, focus, uh, your so-called audience, I don't know if you call that in a student population, but is this undergrad education? Is it graduate education? Or what, what exactly is, is this that you're talking about? Well, yeah, great question. So the, the supply chain program is an undergraduate focused education. So these are undergraduate students, mm -hmm. but the supply chain disruption course uh, that, that was created and that I teach, that is for everyone. That's for the supply chain management professional at various levels of the organization. That course is also for undergrad and graduate students, and it's for people in general all around the world. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that you should say that the, the focus is on undergrad because for so many years, to the extent that there were supply chain management programs at all at major universities, it felt like a lot of them were very graduate school oriented. Now you're bringing down the interest in supply chain management to a younger level and to a, gr a group of students. I think that's a really valuable thing that they get, they get hooked on it, so to speak, earlier. I mean, was that your intention to like bring it down to lower levels for that reason? Yeah, that, that was one of the reasons. This program has always focused on undergraduate supply chain management education. And it also has to deal with some of the trends that we've been seeing in supply chain management recruiting. Right? Companies now are looking for students who have the analytics capabilities, who have interest in learning new technologies, but also to be able to combine that knowledge with uh, supply chain management. And so, you know, at the undergraduate level and providing that experience to these students, it's, it's really made for a perfect combination. Yeah. Now, in teaching this course now and in this time of pandemic, I wonder, Professor Scott, what you yourself as, of course, a not only a professor, but a lifelong student as well, like all of us are, what are you learning these days about how companies can act to mitigate the impact of potential disruptions on their supply chain, such as the pandemic? Yeah, that's a great question as well. During, and you're exactly right, everyone has learned something during this process. One of the uh, fundamental things that I think companies have always managed, but it's now the story is changing, is managing just simply supply and demand. The, the, the thing about this disruption that is different than other disruptive events in the past is that this disruption, COVID-19, caused significant variations in demand and it caused significant variations in supply. There are not too many events in the past where we can point to that has had this significant of an impact on supply and demand simultaneously. So this is really challenging some of those traditional and conventional sales and operations planning processes that a lot of organizations have been using. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing that, that I think a lot of people have learned through this situation when it comes to supply chain is the importance of procurement and strategic sourcing. Right? There are a lot of companies um, who, who get it uh, in terms of having sourcing as a strategic imperative and initiative that they should invest in. But then there are also some companies who may still view uh, procurement as a transactional activity. But COVID-19 has really brought to light the importance of building critical relationships with suppliers. It's brought the importance of, uh, of geographic redundancies, not having supplies uh, coming from just a single geographic location, and also not having supplies come from multiple orga organizations who are in a single geographic, geographic is, location. Is that what you mean when you talk about supply chain ambidexterity? What exactly does that, that, does that term mean? Yes, uh, that's part of what I mean by supply chain ambidexterity. Supply chain ambidexterity is basically a focus on managing a, an innovative paradox within the supply chain. On one hand, you're managing exploratory based type of activities, which deal mostly with building flexibility into the supply chain, building rapid innovation into the supply chain, uh, building strong relationships with your suppliers in the supply chain. 
So you balance that on one hand with efficiency on the other hand, which is what we call exploitation. So mm-hmm. now you're taking the things that you maybe are very familiar with and you can actually squeeze efficiency into those things. So you're balancing flexibility and efficiency. You're balancing exploration and exploitation. And what it really can allow a company to do is build a sense of innovation across their supply chain network, but it also has to include building risk management procedures and practices within the supply chain. The good thing about ambidexterity, it's it's very tough to do and it can be resource intensive. But from my research, it shows that even outside of a disruptive event, uh, outside of disruptive events, organizations who have built supply chain ambidexterity perform well on supply and demand. They also perform well in market performance and financial performance. And so I personally believe that there's a lot of value that ambidexterity can offer uh, supply chains and organizations for managing a disruption because of that. You make a really good point about the, uh, the, the issue, the dynamic of balancing. And I'm wondering if you have seen recently a rebalancing. For instance, for so many years, supply chains place so much emphasis on just-in-time, on lean, on minimizing inventories, on minimizing buffer stock. And now, all of a sudden, they're going, whoa, we think we need some of this inventory to protect us. And so is there, in fact, a rebalancing out there you see going on? There is a rebalancing and, and the rebalancing is necessary. Um, I also want to note that rebalancing does not uh, mean to rehaul completely. Right? So there's also this argument that we're hearing that lean management was the problem. Mm-hmm. And I really like the way that you stated it, rebalancing of, of lean and rethinking these processes because there's no need to completely rehaul the process for a lot of organizations. Because lean, we can actually argue, was not really the problem. It just may have been the fact that organizations were managing their lean processes in a particular way that weren't conducive to highly disruptive events. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to your point, there's definitely going to need your rebalancing, and we're starting to see that already. Well, how interesting that this current crisis actually might have something of a silver lining and that it calls to attention the criticality of supply chains, helps to bolster programs such as your own and get people interested in this topic at a much younger age. Professor Nehemiah Scott, thank you so much for being with us today to talk about these vital topics. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for having me.